I am going to talk more uh, in detail about restraints in Phoenix and um, how to create them and use them in all the scenarios that you're likely to come across. Um, some of this works for both X-ray and cryo, but uh, this is specifically designed for the cryo user at this point. And um, one of the things that often happens when you have a cryo M map is that you will take a, um, a model from somewhere else and uh, use that to dock into your density, or at least as a starting point. And this can often contain ligands and water molecules that you may not actually see in the map. So um, <clears throat> we did a study of those deposited and there was a remarkable number of ligands and water molecules that were not at all supported by the map. So um, it's often good to remove them and then put them back. Pavel didn't mention it, but um, <clears throat> there is a, a tool in Phoenix that will add water molecules as appropriate. Um, <clears throat> and the uh, ligand fitting tools also now work for uh, cryo maps. So there's no real reason to retain them in the hope that they'll provide uh, extra information because you can add them all back. And um, this is just an example that um, you do have to see it. And in some cases, the, the uh, ligands are just floating out nowhere. So <clears throat> restraints in action. They, in Phoenix, they come in two libraries, the Monomer library, which is um, one of the earlier libraries. And um, we also have a, a library called the GeoStandard, which is the, the new and um, more validated restraints for different uh, entities that you might come across in your model. Um, this is a library because you just look up the restraints and you can look at a file and you can see the, the values of the ideal uh, angles and bond lengths and things like that. But there is, of course, um, uh, well, actually, you may not realize, but there is algorithms that will um, come into play whenever you do a refinement. And these are to do with polymerization of the protein because each residue has to be linked to the next residue. And this is done, is done algorithmically as well as other links that you might have. And um, sometimes these are automatic, sometimes they need manual intervention uh, and it really depends on the complexity and uh, the um, well, novelness of it. So in the, in the GEO standard, we have all of the standard amino acids and then the, uh, like the list of non-standard amino acids is uh, updated and, and uh, added as appropriate. And the same goes for all of the nucleotides and uh, both the standard and the non-standard are in there. There is a, a number of others then um, that have been added and validated. So, this does not cover the whole of all of the entities in the PDB. There's um, over 30,000 now uh, through letter codes, I believe. And um, you, you may be called upon to make your own restraints. Um, one parenthetical comment is uh, UNK. UNK is the three letter code that is known as the unknown uh, amino acid. And um, if you look at it, you'll, you'll realize that it's, a, and it's a, a specific set of atoms that the PDB has designated as UNK. And you, if you have a UNK in your, in your um, model, you can't just make it anything. You have to make it a subset of these atoms uh, because the restraints are looking for these atoms and you, uh, you need to comply. So UNK isn't exactly unknown, it's a placeholder and you can only go out as far as um, C gamma in the, uh, in the um, side chain. So you can put it in if you, you don't know what's there, but technically, you know, from a 
programmatic point of view, it is a specific entity. Um, Pavel mentioned this, um, and um, I'm going to mention it again. The CIF stands for Crystallographic Information File, and the MMCIF is the macromolecular CIF. Uh, um, but the problem is, is that this format uh, is becoming used for all sorts of information that you will come across. So the model, there is an MMCIF format for model files. There's an MMCIF format for data files. And um, there's also in the ligands array area, there's two different formats. Uh, I'm sorry, there's two different files that have two different pieces of information in it. Um, they're both CIF format and uh, one is just the information about what this entity is. And the PDB provides those for you. You can download those for any three letter code that you might be interested in, but it is not restraints. It might be uh, in the, the right you know, format, but it doesn't have all of the information that you need. And because SIF is a basically a keyword field setup, the information in the information SIF is very similar to the restraint SIF, but it's not the same. So that uh, is leading to some confusion. Uh, Pavel hinted that the uh, X-ray model, you can only deposit that as an MM SIF now, not as a PDB as was uh, once done. And um, this is coming the way of cryo M too, because the models are so large and they need to be um, able to be deposited. And so MM SIF is exactly that uh, format. And um, you need to not, be confused because if you say I need a SIF file, you have to know uh, really what that is. And the confusion often arises because one of the first kinds of files that turned into SIF was the restraints files. And people have made that a synonym for restraints files, but it's, it's uh, not at this point. So what are restraints? And um, I'm speaking more specifically about covalent restraints and um, they define how long a bond is and how um, what the ideal value for an angle and dihedral. And then there's also other less um, chemically, uh, uh, chemically intuitive things like chirals and planes. You, you know what they are, but they're not um, an internal coordinate in, in the true chemical sense. And they must be weighted against the experimental information. So in uh, the situation where you have good experimental information, you don't need so many restraints. And in the case of bad or, or low resolution information, you need to use more restraints. In Phoenix, this is the overview of the tools that we have, uh, Elbow. Is the, is the workbench uh, as given by its name. It has all of the tools that you need to do lots of different things with regards to ligand building and optimizing. Um, Ready Set is designed to help you go from your model to be able to do a refinement and it uses Elbow uh, as, it's, uh, as needed to create restraints and do several other things that um, you may or may not need for your particular model. <clears throat> now, um, of course, um, you may know more about the, the ligand that you're talking about or even the entity. It doesn't have to be a, 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 a novel ligand, but if you uh, have a, more knowledge, you can actually edit these restraints using a graphical user interface known as Wheel. And it is very handy to adjust some of the, the um, restraints that are generated or even the restraints that are shipped with, uh, with Phoenix. <clears throat> so the, the usual procedure is to generate the restraints and then fit your ligand into the density. This saves you on a couple of things. One, 
is that the atom names and the match between what you're fitting into the density in your model uh, and the restraints are helpful in fitting that ligand into the density. Now, ideally, you should do this separately and check that the restraints are, are, are good, but that's not always the case. So that um, the uh, you know elbow tries to do the right thing and makes it flexible and easy to do these things, and um, you have to have some sort of chemical input, and then you can uh, you can get the the restraints in SIF, and you also get Cartesian coordinates in the PDB format, so you can do your refinement. But um, sometimes you. Uh, Sometimes you do, if you go the way I've already said, you're not checking them beforehand. And um, you, can, you can be, uh, you know, you can be okay that way, but as soon as you see a problem in the, uh, in the validation, you might have to go back and, uh, and take care of that. Now, um, the, the inputs to elbow have, um, a number of different uh, types that you can use. And I've already mentioned the three letter code that designates the, the known entities that the PDB is aware of, like ATP or a heme is HEM or H, uh, you know, depending on the different kinds of heme group. That three letter code, uh, you can specify that three letter code and it will point to a SIF file. Now that SIF file is actually the, the information SIF that I mentioned earlier. And that has all of the information needed to generate the internal topology of a ligand. Um, there are other uh, formats that you can use like a smile string, which is a, a great way of finding, uh, if you can't find the three letter code, I recommend finding the three letter code first because that is, um, really the, the way that the PDB understands and you will be, uh, you will be uh, taking great advantage of that information. But if you have a new thing, you can often go to a, a search engine and type in the name of that molecule and find the smile string. It's a very uh, common way of pointing out what uh, chemical information about a ligand. There are other entities and you'll see on the left I have listed um, PDB which is a in um, point of fact a quite a poor chemical uh, format because you don't have to have bonds specified and which means that you have to use proximity as a surrogate for bonds and it also doesn't um, have to have bond orders which if you don't have hydrogens on in your input can lead to ambiguity in the, in the generation of your ligand. So it's always best to get as much information as you can. And um, the old adage, garbage in, garbage out. If you don't know what you want, then you don't know what you're going to get. So this will then generate three dimensional geometry and that information um, can be used to construct uh, bonds and angles, etc. And then elbow by default will create a three-dimensional optimized geometry uh, using a very simple force field of my own invention. Nothing uh, exciting there, but um, once the hydrogens are added, you can use the, an internal uh, AM1 geometry optimization. It's a semi-empirical method that can be used to improve the geometry and therefore the restraints. Um, I didn't put it in this slide, but you can also plug into several other third-party quantum chemical uh, program packages and also Mogul, which is a very uh, useful, both for validation of geometries because it uses the, um, it uses the small molecule database that was developed over a long period of time to, to check whether the bonds and angles are 
in reasonable ranges. So um, this is actually pointing out that sure you can have chemical input and then you can um, you can create the restraints. You can also send that to a program that I call ready set because it helps you get ready for your uh, refinement. But you can also um, let ready set do everything uh, based on the three letter code. So uh, often that's, that will do the right thing for you. What does ready set do? Well, it adds hydrogens to the entire model including protein and by using reduce, which is a package from the Richardson group. Uh, and it also adds hydrogens to ligands using elbow because elbow knows these things. It creates the restraints, so it knows how to add hydrogens to uh, the ligands. It will also optionally add hydrogens to water, which is and um, deuterions, which is more for um, neutron refinement and very high resolution packet, uh, sorry, um, data that um, some people have. And as I've already said, generates restraints. <clears throat> um, it also uh, creates, creates a, uh, it can optionally use a directory that you have created if you have more than one ligand in your, in your uh, setup. It also tr makes uh, guesses at how your things are linked in your model. And these files are written to disk and you might need to take a look at them and see if you agree with them and then you can supply them to your refinement. Uh, the GUI does this automatically on that many occasions. So uh, you, you don't need to think about that. And uh, it also takes care of metal coordination. However, that is becoming more and more automated. So less and less of that needs to be taken care of manually. <clears throat> so there are some things that uh, can be very helpful when you're running Phoenix Real Space Refine. Um, link records have no impact. Um, so if you have a link record in your input model, Phoenix Refine and Phoenix Real Space Refine, and for that matter, any, any of the programs except for one, um, completely ignore it. I did write a tool that converts a link record into something else, just so that you can see, but um, you cannot use them to create links. Um, standard residues uh, are done automatically, as I said earlier, they use uh, an algorithm and based on how things are close together and what their atom names are and things like that. But there are other things that you might be interested in um, linking as well. So uh, for instance, uh, covalent ligands, they're actually done automatically now. The uh, that default has been set to true. Um, carbohydrates, um, can be very complicated, but um, they have now been to a large degree uh, done automatically. So if you have your carbohydrates uh, positioned appropriately, they should be linked. And as I said earlier, uh, metal ions are becoming more and more uh, automatic. Doesn't mean you shouldn't check, but um, the, the uh, refinement of metal ions has uh, improved. Uh, recently. And of course, the same goes for nucleic acids. Uh, RNA and DNA have uh, bonding between each of the, uh, each of the entities. Um, but there's also additional stuff that has been written uh, to take care of the base pair hydrogen bonding, base pair planarity, which is between two base pairs and um, base pair stacking, which is, um, has been called by uh, Oleg and uh, Pavel by uh, parallelity. Now, um, there are secondary structure restraints, which uh, I think were alluded to as well. You have to have good, good uh, records about what's in your model so that these restraints can be added appropriately. 
CE, yeah, I'm sorry, NCS restraints are automatic if you, uh, if you use real space refine now. Um, you can do custom bonds and angles using edits. There are, you can do more with edits. And there are other ways of um, linking entities besides edits. They're known as SIFLINK files, but um, they are a slightly more complicated and they are in the documentation, but um, you should talk to me and I can help you with that. Um, restraints are written to a file called the .geo file. So it's always written at the beginning of any refinement. And that is the, uh, that is the place where every restraint is written. If it's not there, it's not in your model, your, in your refinement model, I should say. You are not getting it refined. So you need to double check in the geo file. There is uh, a, a good possibility that when you look at your model in a, in a viewing package like Coot or Chimera, you will see those links, but it is not 100% true that every link that you see in the geo file is represented in the, the visual representation that the um, software packages uh, provide. Um, also, non-bonded interactions are listed in the geo file. This can be very helpful to see what is close by uh, and because it's listed in um, order of distance, you can see the very close contacts if that's uh, what you need. So uh, in summary, um, elbow and ready set perform better when they get better information. As I already said, GIGO. Um, you do need to know something about your ligand and or anything that's a little bit unusual in the model. You can't um, just hope that it goes on. And as I said in the previous page, check your geo file. That is the, the gospel when it comes to what is in your refine. And uh, that's it. I do not have a have a slide. Great. Thanks, Nigel. So we got time for a few quick questions. Uh, Got a couple. So first one here is actually really follows on from Pravel's talk about doing some refinements and getting slightly different Ramachandran statistics and asking which is better. Uh, so I don't know if you've got a comment on that, Pavel. And there's also a question, uh, related question, which is, Looking at the validation Ramachandran plot and Coot, it tells me there are two outliers. So it sounds like there's different information no. from Coot and Phoenix Refine, or not yeah. Phoenix Refine, Space Refine and validation. Okay, yeah, yeah, I, I see the questions here. Uh, so to, to answer one, the, the first answer first is um, well, there are a lot of uh, numerical uncertainty, just which is inherent to um, procedures we use. So if you run different farm, if you run same requirements on different platforms or different versions of the software, you may or may not expect the exactly same results. So results might be slightly different within numerical rounding um, errors that are acceptable. So that is totally fine. Um, as for the other question is. Really, with, with me, us, Phoenix, and Qt, we are using different libraries. Well, we're using the same kind of libraries, but they might have different versions, um, and they may not be synchronized by date. So, what we might consider as fine residue, Qt might consider as an outlier, just because Qt's library is a little bit behind at what we used. So that may explain why something is flagged in Qt as an outlier and we don't flag it, for example. But I hope you got the idea. 
Okay, great. And then there's a question to Nigel. Uh, what's the best way to make restraints for ligands like ADP, magnesium, water? So I assume Ricardo is talking about if, if you have uh, magnesium, you know, ligated with ADP because um, that's a common thing. Um, it turns out, in my experience, that uh, magnesium has appropriate um, appropriate van der Waals forces, the radii, that it doesn't uh, turn into much of a problem. Um, and the same goes for, for waters. But of course, if you see a problem, you should let me know. My, uh, but my experience is that this doesn't usually happen, that you need to uh, restrain those together. And uh, if you did, I would suggest edits. I think is it doesn't the chemical components define a, a hydrated magnesium as a, as a residue even? Yes, it does do that. Um, but I don't know how it interacts with the, the nucleotide. So yes, I think that's just to, a... We'd have to see exactly what that is. So I think the answer is that yes, you can certainly define restraints and, and those would be detected automatically uh, if you turn the appropriate things on in Phoenix Refined, for example, yeah? Yes. Um, but I mean, I would certainly be willing to look at any issues that you're having with that. 